Hi, Cizrin here with another episode of Path of Exile University, a teaching series aimed at helping new players understand Path of Exile better. And uh, this is a slightly more advanced episode and you ideally want to have at least watched Mapping 101 before watching this or, you know, already be familiar with maps. But it's going to be uh, going a little bit more um, in depth into maps and uh, yeah, just more advanced, more maps, which is one of the end game systems in Path of Exile. Um, so at this point, hopefully you've now managed to kill Cyrus or have experience with the fight. Uh, or maybe you failed it and you want to know what you did wrong. Um, and once you've killed Cyrus, obviously it changes a bit where um, it is no longer guaranteed to spawn the influence. And um, it will also no longer just be, um, it will also just no longer be like three like before. Um, and you'll see that they'll be longer like this. Can't remember exactly what the max length is that they can go to. And you can still get unlucky and get short ones, but sometimes it will be like out here. It's annoying. Um, and then obviously, whenever you put in those and those maps, that's the ones that spawn like extra influence monsters, and the uh, the monsters can um, can drop better loot. And by better loot, I mean like the influence items, which is like crafting bases. <clears throat> right. Um, so you can spawn a conqueror to any region with high enough tier of maps and enough uh, stone socketed. And uh, I did go into this briefly in the last lesson, but do make sure that you don't spawn uh, because you can spawn a conqueror in a region you've already done at this point. So at this point, uh, try to be careful um, so you don't like. Sometimes, basically, I will get. People asking, hey, I killed Baran but didn't get a watchstone. And it's not a bug, but what happened there is that you killed Baran twice in that region. Um, so rule of thumb for that is hover over the region and look if it says, so for example here, I have Baran spawn here, but it is already obtained. So when I kill Baran, it will not give me a watchstone because I've already got the stone in this region. And again, once you are at the Cyrus stage, then um, you will you will spawn all the conquerors to to spawn Cyrus in a cycle, like you can't spawn two Barans after each other. Right. So let's go a little bit more in depth into awakening level. Every four watchstones you put in the atlas will increase your awakening level by one. Um, the max from watchstones is eight, and there is a. Uh, extra passive tree we'll talk about later that can give you plus one awakening level. The higher awakening level, the harder Cyrus gets, and uh, it's determined of what the awakening level is before starting the fight. Once the portal and the fight is open, even if you haven't gone in, you cannot change the level. So say that I have zero stones, I start the fight, and I'm like, I really want to farm him at a high level, and then I put in eight stones, that is not going to change anything, even if you haven't gone in. So make sure that before you click the open portal to Cyrus that you have um, put in whatever watchstones you want, whether you want a hard fight with a lot of rewards or low um, low stones and, and low rewards. So important. Um, the awakening level is also going to make every uh, map slightly harder. If we hover over it here, you can see that um, uh, there are loads of things happening. Additional drops additional shaper and elder guardian maps which is like some other bosses in path of exile uh, additional base types uh, unique map bosses and more life um and it's just like increasing pretty much everything it's making everything harder so it's a, it's a really really cool system um of doing the, a really cool way of doing things in my opinion um and yeah it'll be more additional currency for map drosses uh map bosses will have a chance to drop unique items, like they could drop a headhunter as a low chance, but you know, they could drop really, really good items. And the more awakened uh, level you have, it's also a higher chance that when you do have like Baran or Redeemer, etc., that they will drop their influence items from like the monsters and stuff. So really, really good to have high awakened level. And your aim is to get a total of 32 Watchstones. That will let you have Awakening level 8. And you can mix and match these with the Maven Stones that we'll be covering in a bit. Um, so you have unique Watchstones from Cyrus. You have Maven Watchstones. Um, and you can take them like out whenever. Um, 
And before we continue on, the normal way that I have my atlas, I can actually, and, and obviously the atlas is getting changed, but I will normally have one or two regions with uh, four and then every other region with three. I normally don't care about lower tier drops, but as an example of what my uh, atlas would look like in ritual, it would very, very often be this. So we're just going to fill this in now uh, because a lot of people are asking, hey, Ziz, why don't you have all your watchstones in? And there is a lot of reasons for that. So let's put these in. Uh, any, every region has three except for this one. So I covered in the last session a little bit about if you can not search for it, it can't drop. If I now search for tier 16, these four show up. Um, and that means that if I drop a tier 16 map, it can only drop these. It can drop Caldera, Arachnid Nest, Excavation, and Atoll. And I might as well cover favorite maps at this point too. It seems like a good place to put it in. And how do favorite map slots work? Um, and again, like if I search for 15, you can see that 16s and 15s are only in this region now. Why would we do this? Well, we're about to cover the, the passives and stuff, but sometimes you just want to focus on one region because there's maybe something very rewarding there. But either way, there's only four 16s that can drop here. Obviously, the unique map doesn't count. Um, so if we look over here on the left, you can see that there are favored map slots. Um, so if I hover over here, it says locked, locked, unlocked. The favorite, the first one, unlock this slot by completing all non-unique maps in this region. Slot 2 is unlocked by completing all the bonus objective on non-unique maps. And slot 3 is by doing all the awakening objective, right? So you can, um, you can uh, get that. And what do the favorite maps do when you've unlocked them? So let's bring out the old notepad for this. So right now we have Caldera can drop. We have Arachnid Nest can drop. We have Excavation can drop. We also have Atoll. Now, out of these, you can argue both Caldera and Atoll are like really, really nice layouts. Caldera has some reasons to run it, like your div cards, uh, but Atoll is very, very popular and the, the one that people want to run the most. What does favoriting it do? So, think of it like right now, when the game will go like, a map drops, it's tier 16. Is it Caldera? Is it Arachnid Nest? Is it Excavation or Atoll? Right now, it's a 25% chance for either. Pretty much. Uh, and then when I favorite it, uh, there, that should be 11. This happens. So now it is a, it basically is a caldera. Is it Arctic Nest? Is it Excavation? Or is it a toll, 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 a toll? So now we have 10, or sorry, well, 10 extra, or a total of 11 atolls in the pool. So now, just by doing this, you can see that you have a very, very large chance of it being a toll. And if you're like, you know what? I really only want a toll. I don't want anything else. It's all I care about. Now you have 31 maps. So is it Caldera? Is it Directed Nest? Is it Exploration? Or is it a toll, 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 a toll? And now you can see that you're almost only going to get it. There are some like, you know, nearby maps and stuff will, uh, you will get others, especially from the map boss and stuff. But for the most part, you're going to get a large amount of atolls now. And um, the, the favorite map system is really, really good. And do remember, uh, you don't ever get more of the map because there are regions that maybe only have one tier 16 or maybe only one tier 15 or even like, let's say lower tiers, maybe we showed uh, in the last session how there was, was it, I don't know, there was something that was the only tier eight. If you triple favorite a map that's the only of its tier, you're just wasting your favorite map slot. Um, so uh, make sure you use it on something where there are others it's competing against. And um, and then now probably some people are thinking, but this why do you only have one region with tier 16s? Well. Sometimes I would also run, uh, Val like I would be doing Valdo's Rest because there were things I needed here and here were Hamlet. So you could have two, but what ends up happening now is that we're adding more competing maps. 
So now it would also be uh, Necropolis and Mace, and both of those are terrible, right? They're not good tier 16s. So now it, it would just be adding to the pool. So by um, um, by like doing this, you can you can influence exactly what kind of maps are dropping uh, and what you want. So generally, the way I will map is I'll be doing one region at a time and focusing on sustain. Sometimes there will be um something really really good like. Uh, like the passives that we're about to talk about, like the diplomatic escort passive, it was like very, very easy for sustain, where you could do just such a large amount that you would just, you would have like hundreds and hundreds of tier 16 maps. You can see now I have like 346 14s, 206 15s, and 62 16s. Um, so there's a lot you can do for like increased sustain. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the passive tree. Each region gets a special talent tree. Uh, and this was introduced during the Ritual League and the expansion there. And uh, it's like an ascendancy tree for your map. And they are unlocked via the Maven Invitational Fights. And you fight bosses that you've previously witnessed by Maven. How does this system work and when does it come into play? It's uh, somewhere between like tier 3 and tier 5 maps. Um, first you will encounter the Envoy, which has like a really nice soothing voice and sounds like Peter, Peter Dinklage. Uh, but it's not. It's not Peter Dinklage. I can't remember his name, but uh, either way, uh, he will appear. Nice, soothing voice. And the first time, nothing happens. But then um, after he's appeared once, at some point, the maven will appear in a map and witness it. Uh, and that basically, she basically wants to watch you kill something for entertainment. And uh, let's say that she appears in, um, let's say that she appears in Tyrion's end. Then you will get, uh, you will get like this thing. You just slam it into your map device. You basically click on your map device, uh, and it upgrades it, and it adds this thing here. Um, and then you would need to do two more. Uh, you would need to witness two more fights, specifically in the region uh, that you first found in, which is now Turns End. And uh, once you have done all three of the first ones, uh, it'll and there'll be like a counter here. It'll look differently the first time, obviously. Um, and uh, it'll drop something called an invitation. You click that in your map device and uh, you go fight the three bosses that you uh, witnessed. Uh, so there's the button here that if you uh, have a map in, if it's uh, eligible to be witnessed, you can like, it'll be yellow. We actually have that on the next slide. Uh, or, okay, it's further into the slide, but that's fine. Um, and for every fight you do, you get two additional Atlas skill points. Uh, now, especially on softcore, it's not that bad with what once you are witnessing. However, um, you do want to be a little bit careful with um, you do want to be a little bit careful with what once you witness because it can be very very dangerous. Um, and yeah, you get two skill points for that region. You get boss loot for all of the slain bosses. And you have a chance to drop like the rollable special special wash turns, especially when you're doing the um, uh, the later on. You get to do a ten way, so it's basically the first time you do these fights in a region. You're fighting three bosses, and there will be very very low level. Then it's then I think it's it's three, four, five, six, and ten, if I remember correctly. Uh, and the ten way can be very very dangerous. Uh, there is a small chance when you do it that everything every boss will be released at once. Usually you're fighting like two bosses, then two, then three. Uh, but there is a chance that just like Maven just goes like, fuck it all and, and releases all 10. If you're on hardcore and this is early in the league, that can instantly kill you because sometimes you have 10 hard bosses and it's just like, you're dead. That's not something you fucked up. That's just DGD decided. Wouldn't it be fun if there's a small chance that we just fuck their shit up? Um... Some people have it happen quite a lot. I actually only had it happen once during Ritual Hardcore Soul Cell Fun. Only one time. And uh, one time during my Gauntlet practice run. Uh, but either way, it is fairly rare. Um, and you can have a max total of 10 points in each region. And these can, like, they'll add monsters. They can sometimes increase the difficulty. But they are very, very rewarding. Um... And it's, it's a very, very strong one. And as for what to pick, 
This is most likely, well, we, we know that it's getting changed and we don't know for what. So as soon as, um, as soon as all the changes are listed, I'm going to make a video again saying these are the best regions. But let's look at Ritually and some of the good examples of what was strong here. So Valdos Rest had a Harbinger node that was insanely strong and basically spawned a map worth of Harbingers. So like three, four hundred monsters in like one small area. It was fairly dangerous and, and rippy, but it was so rewarding and Valdos was like probably the most popular mapping choice during the Ritual League. Um, Haywar Kamla had two really good nodes. It had Essence nodes, which I'm hoping and praying stay because they were just so nice, especially for solo cell phone. But basically they, um, this one was kind of garbage, but uh, this one made that Essences, instead of being able to spawn at a max of screaming, they could spawn at shrieking. And that mean, meant that you would very regularly get deafening Essences. So uh, it was just so nice. And obviously this one meant that you always got an Essence so uh, in Beyond, this was really, really good for Soul Cell Fun. Um, in Soul Cell Fun, it was uh, really, really good with Essences here. The Beyond one was really, really good for Trade League. And then this one was extremely popular no matter what you were doing, which was uh, a larger chance for Harvest. And that when you did find it, you got more of like the rare ones, like Augment, Annulments, etc. So Highwork Hamlet ended up being like one of the best regions in general. Um, Glenek Karen had like some really good Legion nodes, but really, really good Incursion nodes. Uh, they made Incursion very good to run. Uh, and it's uh, Incursion has been something that maybe has felt like pretty bad for people. And that changed a lot in Ritual League, where it became very worth running. Uh, and, and not just like even it, it made the Temple very easy to run too. So it was, it was, it was really, really good. Uh, Turns End and uh, what's the other one? There are two that had really good. Uh, Lyra, Arthane, and Turin's End both had really, really good uh, bestiary nodes, which made bestiary, like, so much better. And and all of these, like, the takeaway here is that they really, really empowered and gave it a lot stronger of an identity. Um, and and Lexiorius made Pirandus, like, insanely good. So there, there are loads of other ones that were strong as well, but these are some of the top examples uh, of how it really, really changed the gameplay. And um, it changed a lot that people were doing less like oh this is the best map this league like some things there's been like oh we're always farming burial chambers or we're always farming tier 14 strand or something now it was more about like oh this is a really good region for this that is a really good region for that uh like i was running for for the first time in a long time i ran so much parandus i actually kind of hope that stays because it was very very interesting the parandus was so strong like i got like eight chevrons wrappings four impulses three taste of haste Really, really rewarding, uh, and it felt very, very good to actually have Parandus points for something other than vendoring them for Wisdom Scrolls. Um, so yeah, and the first six points that you get, you get very, very quick access to. You get very, very quick access to your first six points. Obviously, your last four are um, pretty hard, but um, yeah. And, and I will make a video showing like where your first points should go and stuff as soon as it's up. Um, and normally you don't really get rewarded for mix and matching. Normally you would get rewarded for like, you know, filling in like all the way to essence. Like I wouldn't do this one and then that, right? You normally will fully scale one league mechanic at a time. Uh, so, and, and that allows you to receive rewards earlier. You can focus on either easier gearing or easier currency farming. Um, and yeah, maybe talk to other players and ask your friends, like, what are their choices? Like, it depends what you want to do as well. One good example of what it depends on what you want to do is I didn't really care much about Dell this league, so I didn't care or do any of the Dell uh, stuff. Whereas um, for a lot of people, some of these nodes were really good if they wanted to focus on delving. Um, and the nodes are changing, so... I do have a video up on what's currently the best, and this is most likely not going to be relevant. And if you if you want to, you can also change. You can also change what you have with um with these, which are whoops, where are they? Oh, I don't have one right now. Uh Orb of Unmaking. I'm pretty sure they're called Orb of Unmaking, but I can't remember right now. Um and then you'll get refund points. Uh they're same similar to regrets, but a lot rarer. They can drop from anywhere. And I'd say, I feel like the the random drop rate is very rare. 
I would say it's three to five times, no, maybe five to ten times less common than an Exile. It's very, very rare uh, because I think I found between 50 and 100 pure Exile drops this league, and I found less than three pure drops of this. However, there are other ways to get them as well. Whenever you do the Maven, whenever you do any of the, like the super boss fights that we're about to cover, or whenever you do the 10 ways, then you can drop Orb of Unmakings at a fairly reasonable rate, but you do not get access to them early game. You do not get access to them early game. Especially the Maven fight itself drops them a lot. Um, and like, yeah, the, the there's not really any wrong choice here, but um, you do this to get like more of the league mechanic that you're trying to run. So some people really like Legion, whether you're SSF or Trade League, like maybe you just really like Legion and then you pick the Legion nodes, um, etc. And even though like I wouldn't say the Breach nodes were particularly good, um, but if you really like the Breach nodes and have fun with that, they do make them better. So here is what it looks like when uh, when the Maven is witnessing a fight. And uh, it's important to get used to this because later on you'll have access to like bosses. Like say you're doing Shaper, etc. Right? And if you're doing Shaper and you're you're witnessing, like you can witness the boss fights, it becomes really hard. To the point where you might not even be able to do it on software. So make sure you're very careful with what is being witnessed and what isn't. Um, and she will actually empower the bosses and uh, she will do like really, really cool things to the boss, like heal the boss. Uh, and people really, really enjoy that because like what is more fun than when you've almost killed the boss and Maven goes, Vitality! And it goes back up to full life. There's no better feeling. Um, so... Um, obviously that got nerfed a little bit during Ritual League, but, um, there are some, like, things to make Maven less challenging. Particularly grabbing a Frost Bomb gem can be really, really good. To the point where early in the League, I myself had a very strong build, went into Shaper, and I could barely kill Shaper. Because she heals the Shaper during invulnerability stages. So, I was just like... This is a tough fight. It was like 20, 25 minutes. And then I was like, I'm going to go get Frost Bomb because that lowers the region of monsters. But do remember, the takeaway here is that the Maven does make the fight harder. Uh, and it is genuinely hard. Even on good builds. Um, and then once you've witnessed enough bosses for a region, an invitation will drop. The first time you do a 10-way, it guarantees that an invitation will drop. Uh, and or so that basically means that once you're on the final stage, which looks like this, once the first time you hit full here, it will drop an invitation. Now, invitations can drop before then, and after that they're random, which makes no fucking sense at all. Uh, and that's something they should just completely do away with because it should just literally be once you get like sometimes you end up getting like seven in this region and just zero in this region and just. It just feels bad and the player just ends up wondering, did I fuck something up? Am I doing something wrong or am I bugged? And it's not very clear and it's just a very weird system. So I do hope they change that that every time for 10 ways because there are like harder boss fights and these make more sense. These make more sense that, okay, now it's RNG. That's fine. These can all stay RNG, but the normal ones shouldn't be and it makes no fucking sense. Um... Right, uh, and then, and then, and then, and then. And then after that, they are completely random. Right, so again, activating it, this means that it's not being witnessed, and this means that it is being witnessed. So, glowy, yellow, good, or bad if you want it to be easy. And the Maven can witness any normal map boss if the tier of the map is high enough. So... In the, in the first time you're doing the region, um, in the first time you're doing the region, then um, you can do them at like low tiers. And then once you go to like the four, five, and six ways, you're also going to need to be upgrading your Atlas region and also 
uh, doing higher level maps. And obviously the bosses are going to be harder. And um, once you get to the 10 ways or like the, the random super boss ones, you can roll those imitations. Whereas the early ones are more like quests, which is just like, just kill this. It's not going to be any extra mods. It's just going to be like like a white map, but they'll get harder and harder. Uh, whereas like on the on the 10 ways, you can actually roll it, make it really hard, um, and you'll get more rewards. And uh, similar to for the Conqueror storyline, the map device will tell you and give you warnings if like she can't witness a fight or what's wrong. Like if it's too low tier. Right. Here are some some things that the Maven can also witness and really fuck your shit up. Um, this is like a fairly bad idea at the start because it's really, really, really difficult. But she can witness Shaper, Elder, Guardians, Breach Lord, Uber Ziri, Uber, Uber Elder. Um, and it can really fuck your shit up. Very, very much. But there are upsides too because when you have witnessed, like let's say you witness the four Shaper Guardians. Um, then you get to unlock this like tree in the middle. And uh, when you are doing the fight of fighting four Shaper Guardians at the same time, they can all drop their individual reward. And uh, there are multiple ways of getting to the Uncharted Realm, which is like the special thing in the middle. You can either defeat Maven or any of the other fights. So um, let's look at all the ones you can do. So you can hover over this and you can do the ones with the Shaper Guardians. You can do the Elder Guardians. You can do the, the Cortex Guardians, like the Synthesis bosses. You can do the Breach Lords, and you can do um, the Feared. And the Feared is now the hardest thing in the game, uh, or, well, virtually. Virtually the hardest thing in the game, and it consists of Cortex, Chayula, Ubrid Ziri, Shaper, and Elder. Um, so this is a very, very hard fight. You're fighting all of these at once. And it's very, very hard. Now, all of these are hard. And just as a quick rule of thumb, the Shaper and Elder Guardians ones are the easiest ones. Um, I'd say probably... It depends a little bit on the build. I find they're both very easy uh, comparatively. And then you have the Synthesis bosses are probably the, um, the next up. That's like slightly more difficult. However, these are also very hard to get to find all four of these is very very hard uh it took me a very long time to get my rewritten distant memory uh i don't think i had it the first three weeks maybe um the breach swords they're very very easy to get because this might change but currently you can witness normal breach stones so like a level 70 is off and just like kill them very very easily now when you actually do uh the formed i think it's called the I think it's the form. And anyway, whenever you do the Breach Lord fight, they will be the same as pure Breach Stones. They will be all high level, and it's very dangerous. Uh, it's actually not that much. For a lot of builds, it might even be harder than the Feared, because Ulnatul, if you have low damage, can just end up stacking up. Oh, it's called the Hidden. Uh, the Ulnatul, if you have low damage, can just end up stacking up so many that it can just one-shot a lot of builds. So very, very dangerous. Um, and on Hardcore, you really want to make sure... <laughs> That you have an insane build. Um, and then uh, after that, you have the feared, which is insane. Insane. So all of those will give two points each. And um, yeah, so this is like the final, final passive tree. And what's so special about it? Well, it affects the entire atlas, every region. Uh, and that is really, really cool. Uh, now, do note that nothing. Uh, nothing affects things like, say you find a Zana in Haywark Hamlet. Even if she gives you a Haywark Hamlet map, Sextants or uh, Passive Trees or anything, nothing affects that Zana, right? Uh, it's completely unaffected. Think of it as Zana having her own Atlas and she's got a shit one where she hasn't upgraded anything. Uh, is a good way to think about it. But yeah. Um, you also get all the boss drops when you are doing these special fights. So it is is really, really good. You can also get synthesis drops, which is not really going to be covered here, but like they're really good rare items. You get master missions, and it's just ah, oh, it's amazing. Uh, there's so much you can do here with um, with this. We're gonna look over it here in a second, um, and pretty much all of it is good in some ways. So we don't know what's being changed here, but let's look at some examples. Uh, the most popular thing on this was path not taken, 
and we kind of abuse that, especially early league. And what it does is that the maps that Zana give you, like the choices, it just doubled. So if she's about to give you eight maps, you get 16. Um, and this is so incredibly strong because um, sometimes then you would have like just like a, this big row of maps to choose from. And it would be very, very popular to either look for Zana maps like Cortex, really, really good unique maps, or what we were all searching for, map contains harvest, which was the biggest chase thing in uh, Ritual League. So that was very, very popular. Most people had that. There's some other really, really good things as well. I don't necessarily think this is changing that much, to be honest. Um, here is like that you're speeding up your Conqueror progress. Uh, here is just plus one Awakening level. That means that you could have Awakening level eight uh, while you normally would have seven, or you could go all the way to nine. This is possibly the most disappointing thing in all of Path of Exile for all time for me personally, because um, Awakening level nine would have been such a cool way to introduce Uber Cyrus in the same way that we have Uber at Ziri, where I was really hoping it barely, if any, more difficult than the eight fight currently. And I think it would be so cool if you threw in a few conquerors and maybe added two or three more unique items. So I really hope they do that because this deserves to be special. I think it's really cool. Um, this is an increased chance for Cyrus to drop an awakened support gem. Um, this I initially thought was garbage, but it is probably the strongest um, node on the thing. And it's only two points. It's basically that you're getting one more mission per day, which is good, but it's also 10% chance to grant Atlas mission on completion. And it wasn't until a friend of mine, Embu, put it into a different frame of reference that it, this is the same as getting 100 extra to Awakening level. Or 100 and... I can't remember exactly. But either way, the Awakening level, which is like the third step of completing maps. So if we look here at Shore, right? It says complete this map with at least tier 14 and Awakening level 2. The map can be white. You don't need like the same way, you know, even though it's a red map, you don't need it to be rare and corrupted. You can do it completely white, but uh, it would need to say two here and the shore would need to be tier 14. That's all you need for awakening level. Um, and the more you get, you're getting more, um, it's effective modifiers on non-unique maps. So that means that, you know, like anything would be like 100% fist damage would be 120% fist damage. Um, and then you have, uh, as you see here, 8% chance additional map, or sorry, 8% additional chance to receive an Atlas mission when completing a map. So it's it's a very, very large percent there. And when you have high on this and this, you actually have a very large chance to get a uh, Atlas mission. Uh, and as a uh, final trick, what I did as well, so these like special Maven stones, what I did was I rolled these for... Uh, master missions from completing a map have a 90% chance to be Zana. And I rolled four of those. So I basically would get shit tons of Zanas. Um, and if you're now like, maybe you're still learning and you're thinking, well, why do you want to do this? Well, you just get such a large amount of Zana missions, which is, well, first off, you're getting loads of free maps. You're getting free access to Harvest. And even though I'm playing solo cell phone, I think I had 13 or maybe as many as 15 Cortex maps um, in this league, which have loads of very, very valuable drops. Um, if there's any softcore players in chat, they could tell me how much a bottled faith is on softcore. But either way, it is a few exalted orbs and um, it's very, very nice to be able to farm. So stuff like that is very useful as a quick tip. <clears throat> Eight exalted orbs, twenty-two x last league, twenty to thirty x last league. Okay, so it's a, it's a good way. It's a good way. Um, let's see. But yeah, obviously, getting those passives are very very hard. So something we didn't talk about in the in the last episode. Um, there there are a few downsides and a few problems with the current way the atlas is done. And sometimes you will see streamers, especially Karvarusku, is very, very known for this. And he leaves maps uncompleted sometimes. And why do we do this? <clears throat> and that is because the favored map system comes into place kind of too late. Um, ideally, my biggest feedback to GGG 
would be that either we should be go back to being able to remove maps from the atlas, or probably the first time you do a tier five map in a region, the uh, first uh, favorite map should, slot should unlock. Because right now, if you're an advanced player and you understand how to manipulate the atlas, you have a very, very large advantage. And um, the, the reason I think that they should change it slightly is because this is a permanent decision that is like, it'll basically break your atlas for the entire league. Like right now, there's no way for me to uncomplete these. As an example, right? If I had just never completed Excavation, Arachnid Nest, and Caldera, the only map that I could drop, even without the favorite map system, would uh, would be, uh, if I'm doing 16s anywhere else, it would only be Atoll. And when I'm doing Atolls, I could drop more Excavations because they are connected. But there are several regions where you aren't necessarily connected to a map of the same tier, and then you end up with that being the only map. Lastly, uh, I made a long video talking about how you can very easily farm Residence as your only tier 2 for Dapper Prodigy. Um, and what that meant was that at least in that region, you just don't do any other tier 2. And this is so incredibly worth it, especially early on. Because that means before you have access to the favorite map slots, you can then force that it's the only one of that map. Um, so the best reason to do that is either uh, well, it's usually divination cards. So residence with Dapper Prodigy to farm more six things. Uh, Scriptorium is very, very popular to do this with. So let's look at this, right? Right now, Scriptorium is tier 13. Uh, but sometimes there are other levels where we can manipulate this. Uh, Scriptorium is now tier 10. Uh, and this is a perfect example, right? So we see here that Scriptorium is tier 10. And if I have never completed Malformation, Graveyard, Lava Chamber, or Ancient City, I can be running Scriptoriums. There are no other tier 10 that I can drop. So it gives me a very large chance that I can infinitely sustain Scriptoriums. And if I'm running tier 11s or like just other maps in other regions, the only tier 10 map that I can drop is always Scriptorium. The only other time they can drop is if I'm running a Haunted Mansion, then Malformation can drop, but it does still obey like the normal like ant line rules. But um, it's incredibly strong. Now, this is very, very advanced, and it's not necessarily something you do need to care about if you're just playing the game for fun. But, um, you know, when you're like trying to compete in events and stuff, this is, it's good to know that this exists and be aware of it. Um, and it, it wasn't always like this before we could remove maps from the Atlas if you did desire to do more advanced Atlas manipulation. And um, basically, this is a recent change in the last six months where GGD said, there is no longer a reason for the player to do this. Bullshit. There is. It's a massive advantage for advanced players. So the, the reason I want the uh, the favorite map slot to be unlocked earlier is that it, it would be so much more casual friendly. Right now, you have a very large advantage if you are uh, in the know, where you can very easily farm um, uh, divination cards and stuff like that. So, and, and, and sometimes you just... Uh, don't have to use your favorite map slot for that thing. So it's it's very, very good. Now, obviously, they are in one way, right, where it is becoming less and less worth to do this because obviously you need to complete loads of map for the Maven invitations uh, and the favorite map sy system is genuinely very good. The only thing, in my opinion, they need to do is to unlock both the first two slots early or at least the first one. Um, the reason for this is because uh, it takes so long for, for this to, to get in. Um, so I, I personally use this at league starts. I'll be very, very careful on, uh, on what I complete. And this gives me a very, very big advantage. There are several regions that, uh, I can't remember wherever Rampart is. Where is Rampart right now? Here. Oh, was it Rampart? Oh, maybe it was last league for Rampart. But either way, there were some times where like, there was like three or four maps up here. I didn't bother completing. And it just ended up with me being, uh, having a really nice atlas where like I had only one tier 12, only one tier 13, and I didn't even need to bother with the favorite, uh, map system. And I got to like run really, really good maps. So it is worth exploring. And I just want to make sure that people know that it is a thing. Uh, but definitely something they should make easier because the, the really, really bad thing and why I'm very like passionate, you could say about this is in my opinion, 
you should never be adversely affected permanently by choices you made when you were unexperienced, right? Because this is a permanent change. This is a permanent thing. It's similar to like, imagine if you allocated a skill point on your character and it was just permanently there. Just make a new character. But it's even worse than that because it's still lol, make a new account. Make a new account, bro, if you want to unfuck your atlas. So they definitely should uh, make it at least uh, a little bit more fair with the 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 favorite map spots. But at least the favorite map spots are really good right now and in a good location. Um, and you can also with with the same way with like limiting the map pool, you can use watchstones uh, a lot as well to uh, to this end because. Sometimes you might really want, like right now, you can see that we have uh, the option of uh, having Scriptorium uh, as the only tier 10, right? Imagine we hadn't completed these, uh, Scriptorium was the only one unlocked, or maybe we have unlocked these, but it's triple favorited. You can now look and, and using the search bar a lot is very, very important, but now we can, um, uh, we can either fill in the other regions like this, or like take them out. And by this, you can create less competition for the map that you want. So making sure you use the search bar a lot is good. Because now we just removed another, like, three drops. So you can manipulate the atlas very easily there. And there used to be an atlas regret orb. They just took it out of the game. Um, let's see. And um, sometimes... Sometimes, for example, uh, with Harvest, there was uh, a lot of people farming uh, lower maps. Like, maybe they didn't necessarily need tier 16s. Maybe they only wanted to farm in the, like, tier 9, tier 12, or 14, just because it's easier and faster and easier to sustain the maps. And then you could have the opposite, where you have every region with um, four watchstones, except for this one. Uh, and then you're going to be just, just dropping a shit ton of that one, basically. So... There's a lot of manipulation you can do. And you could also... I usually don't do this. But... <clears throat> it's not a bad thing to keep one or two regions, especially in the start, fairly low. So that you're dropping some good like tier 5, tier 8 maps for new characters to level up quickly in. So, what about sustaining maps? So... Map sustain is a function of basically juicing up your maps is what we call it, which is like juicing up is like a term the PoE community use for like just adding shit tons of stuff to the map. There's a lot of things we can do to put more monsters in the map. And um, and uh, we actually have an example of a super juiced map here later. This might look like very, very scary to a lot of new players. But yeah, uh, that's uh, whenever somebody says they're juicing a map, they're putting in things like a lot of watchstones, uh, high high awakening level, sextants, scarabs, rolling the map well, and there's a lot of things you can do. Um, so that's what that term means. And map sustain has gotten incrementally easier throughout Path of Exile. Historically, it used to be incredibly hard, and you could very easily run out of the end game. Whereas now, um, and now it's pretty easy to the point where you can run maps completely unrolled or blue, and you can still like uh, sustain between tier 13s and 16s. Um, but you aren't very easily able to sustain one specific map. Like, only running at tolls can be kind of hard. Um, so there's a couple of things we can do here. So incursion and incursion temples can be a really, really good thing to get additional maps. Um, Zana missions are basically free maps and can help you with sustain. Um, side content, while well, side areas and stuff like that can help. And, um, juicing the map. So... Juicing is adding sextants, harder, harder modifiers, mo more monsters, more quantity, prophecies even, uh, adding extra league mechanics. So through the map device, we have, for example, we can run, um, we have the infused ones, which is an either even more advanced one. You don't start with these, and this is something you discover through harvest, but like infused bloodlines. This will give us six additional packs of blue monsters, and they can help drop maps. And then you have like the ones you start with. These cost chaos orbs, uh, anarchy, ambush, domination could be good. Beyond can be really good, etc. And and these get changed up. So these are being changed up this week. Um, but either way, uh, that that's some things you can do to juice them up. So like you have sextants, 
Uh, and I actually have a guide on Sex Sense 2, but the, the easy rule of thumb and the TLDR is anything that adds monsters to the map is good. Here you get two more strong boxes. Here you get 30% increased magic pack size. Here, and there are loads of these, you get eight additional packs of monsters. Um, and here you get Alva for free. Or you could just roll over Alva because you can already put that on the map normally. So now you have like loads of extra packs. And this can, if you're wondering like, oh, well, this is all seeming very complicated, Zizarin. I just, I got home from work. I just want to roll some maps. I don't bother rolling them that much. And I don't want to bother with all this extra stuff. How much of a difference can it really be? Well, it can be such a difference that, that a map can go from having maybe like 300 to 400 monsters uh, as the base. And if you roll the map, you can get as many as two or 3,000 monsters in a map. Or at least like very easily over one or 2,000. So it can be a very, very large difference. Very, very, very large difference. So it is worth increasing and juicing your maps. Um, and on Trade League, it can be easy to buy these off other people. And a lot of people often ask me, like, how do you have so many sextants? How do you have so many uh, chisels? Um, and you, uh, on solo cell phone, you want to be kind of careful with where you use them. So uh, obviously this changes a little bit, like early league. Maybe I'll throw like a few sextants, a few chisels on early tier 10 and 11 maps to increase my map pool. But generally, I try to only chisel tier 15 and 16 maps. And I try to only sextant uh, tier 14 to 16 maps as well especially if there's already like atlas influence on the map so like here in in three maps the third one that i put in here i could like super juice everything um so that that is like a good example there and, and this is all like very very worth it and you get a lot more currency back out of it but yeah it is uh if you're like doing it on everything you're gonna run out you are gonna run out and um, yeah, you ideally you want to spend as little as you can to receive the most out of it. And while the methods are the same between group and solo play, it is insanely completely broken to play in a group of six friends right now because there's an innate party bonus where you basically get more quantity and rarity for how many people are in um, uh, are in the group. And uh, somebody in chat just pointed out as well, make sure you're chiseling before alking a map because if you're currently doing this, that is painful and nobody wants to see that shit. Uh, because if you do it while the map is um, while the map is white, you only need to use four chisels. Only need to use four chisels. And that's for like any quality currency. So that's important. So, um, it is a lot more worth to use things like scarabs and, and sextants and stuff the more people are in the map because of the party bonus and stuff, even though you'd probably think like, well, surely, surely is in, you have to split the loot that you get too, so it ends up evening out, right? It really doesn't. It, it doesn't anywhere near even out. The, the difference of what you can farm solo, whereas like what you can farm with an optimized six-man group we're talking like power of 10. It is just completely screwed up. Like even including like splitting it. If you can maybe solo farm as a strong player, like 10 to 30 X a day, you could farm a couple of hundred X a day with like, if you're watching like Empyrean and people like that, it's completely busted. Uh, I am personally, I don't mind people doing it. I think you should always do the best you can, but I, I'm not a favor of the game allowing it to exist in, in a certain way. Um, not a huge fan, personally. Uh, but yeah. And then um, whenever you are solo, normally what is pretty popular is you can stay in like tier 2 to tier 5 fire uh, tower maps and really juice them up. So like low maps, you don't really care about doing super high ones often. Depends on your build as well, obviously. But when you are like doing like delirium and stuff, it can be like really, really good to um, uh, farm for the nurse card in tower maps. And it's very easy to sustain. Um, it's very, very easy to sustain low tier maps. Uh, if you're in a group as well, something that's really popular is, for example, right now, port is tier 11 and you can farm for the saint's treasure. Uh, so the item quantity bonus in a party, very, very good. There's a lot of things you can do. Like, 
Empyrean Script looted two Headhunters in one map. So there's a very, very big difference between optimal and non-optimal in Path of Exile. Um, and, and that, the reason about like, why aren't you running high tier maps is because a lot of the things that are rewarding aren't necessarily dependent on the tier of the map. It's more about like the layout, what can drop there, like divination cards, and how much you juice it. Um, so you're, you're sacrificing experience, and if it's something like, if the map is like influenced with like, you know, um, Varan and stuff, obviously you're not able to drop high tier bases, but that is the sacrifice you can make. So, here's like, yeah, general progression of juicing maps and what kind of every, everybody should do this at least. And again, as many as I do put out a lot of tips and advice for people, again, the bottom line for everything, no matter what, is if you're having fun, you're not playing the game wrong. The only way to do something wrong is not have fun. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, but yeah, generally on white maps, you roll them with two decent modifiers, just run them blue, uh, especially in solo cell fun, you can very easily run out of alchemies and stuff like that. Uh, and make sure you use your white master missions. And a nice rule of thumb for master missions, especially like best tier uh, and Alvin stuff, it's, it's pretty useful to use them in the highest tier available. Uh, especially like uh, best theory, there are some beasts locked behind item level. Like for example, the the Feral Tiger can only drop a tier 13 maps or higher. Uh, on yellow maps, I don't recommend chisels here, but you can do it, especially on Tradely, you can always buy uh, more chisels. But uh, you, you at least want to start rolling them rare and you want to start using your yellow master missions early. And on red maps, especially when you're first breaking into them, chiseling here is very normal. Uh, to like break in and stay in red maps and not go back down to yellows um, and like build a successful pool because while I'd say right now it is very very easy to build and maintain a pool you can still get unlucky and maybe, maybe get like one or two 11s and 12s run those and get nothing back that can be very very common but on average you will be always just increasing your pool now uh, you generally always want to run them rare you don't always need to instantly corrupt the map so obviously we talked about how like the bonus on red maps you need to corrupt the map and run it corrupted but you don't necessarily need to do this on a first one say you run a core map right a red core map you can run this just like either blue or rare and just run it and complete it because then it can drop in the future and um when you have two or three you can think about corrupting it so you don't necessarily need like oh i got one corrupt it oh it, i can't run this one that could end up screwing you. Um, and generally, like on red maps, I try to get like at least 60 to 80 plus quantity. But the number one thing I roll for, because the stain is so easy in Path of Exile now, normally what I would do is I would grab like a bunch of maps. Uh, let's say, uh, let's say Shore might be a map that I really want to run a lot of. It's got a pretty nice layout. I have 69 Shores. That's, that's a nice number. And then I would just Alk them. Uh, I would just alk all of the shores and you can roll this in a tab so you can search for for example reflect um, you can search for crit or mods you don't want to run but either way what I do especially as a hardcore player is um, I would then go through like okay I am I'm a frostbolt character I can't run elemental reflect um, okay elemental weakness that's fine might be a little dicey leech that's fine I'm okay with not leeching this map uh, reflect again. Oh, but I do remember there is a sextant that um, makes you immune to reflect. So you can also uh, keep reflect maps for those. Don't like specifically roll for this sextant. As you can see, I've used quite a lot right now and still not had it. This would have been way cooler example if I got it instantly. Uh, but here, like 300 sextants later, I got uh, players and their minions cannot take reflected damage. So it could keep them too, especially on Soul Soft on this could be popular, but there's nothing wrong with just rolling over maps you can't do. Obviously, this is a big advantage for builds that can do everything, like an Essence Strain build or a Chaos build. There you have like a, a big advantage that, hey, I can do everything. So you don't need to use a lot of currency. And uh, here's like what you ideally want to be doing. On white and yellow maps, you can then, um, especially like further in, you try to like, Go for a map that has a good layout or good divination card drops. It depends what you're doing. If you're pushing XP, if you're trying to farm master mission or trying to farm div cards. Uh, <clears throat> and especially if you're trying to farm for div cards or anything that drops, then you do want to, even on white and yellow maps, care about the roll. Um, <clears throat> 
and uh, if you are farming for div cards, then you can also um, then you can also use like chisels and sextants, even if it is a white map, because sometimes you just really want to farm div cards. And incursion helps a lot for that as well. Uh, there are several prophecies as well. I do have a separate video talking about all the prophecies, but there are things like adding frogs or adding rats or adding prophecies to the map, and that will give you either more quantity or more monsters to kill. Uh, on red maps, you want to start optimizing your incursion a little bit. You want to, ideally, something that's good for maps to say, is say that you're doing like uh, three three maps with incursion in it, with uh, maybe tier 11s or tier 13s, and then you can finally do one tier 16 uh, with incursion, and the entire temple is going to be tier 16. Then you're going to end up getting a lot more sustain, and it's really, really good that way. Um, especially on software, you can corrupt chiseled rare maps. So if I go ahead and start like slamming with Valorbs, uh, these maps, you'll see they uh, easy first try. This now has eight modifiers and has a shit ton of quantum uh, pack size and stuff like that. And this is a really, really good map that I can run, but it's very, very easy for something to be like, crit, I don't want to run crit. Um, or like end up being uh, like minus max or a flank. Now, what happened here? Has this rerolled my entire map? Could this be a reflect? No, it doesn't actually change the mods. Whenever you vol a map and it becomes rare, it uh, it has exactly the mods before. It just adds like more quantity. So don't worry when you vol a map and it turns unidentified, like I don't know what it is now. It's completely safe, as assuming it was safe before you voled it. Um, and then, yeah, here you want to focus a little bit more on good sextants. So good sextants is anything that adds monsters to your map. The only one that adds monsters that might be bad is the physical monsters one because they have um, they have uh, like a big aura, like a proxy shield around them. Um, right, let's see. If you use Zana missions here, I really like using Zana missions on tier 15s or 16s because then you're getting tier 16 free maps. Uh, and you have a good chance to get like Hydra and stuff like that as well. And uh, whenever, if you're wondering, let's see. So here, Zana sells you a bunch of maps. But what if you run out? You run out of maps, right? It's like, how much are these? I can't actually afford to buy all these. But anyway, let's say like, actually you buy all of them and you, you run out of maps. I just spent like 50 chaos on maps. I'm like, I can't even buy the chisels to make the empty window. But like, now what? Does it reset when I level up? Does it reset every day? No, it resets. There is one other thing that I actually not even completely sure. There's something about like the hidden flare level that changes it periodically. You will get like some free random resets. It's like two or three times a league. However, what resets it is every time you activate a daily mission. So if I open this now, I don't have to run it. I don't actually have to go into the map. But now this is new. And this is really, really worth checking because this could sell me a Cortex for 8 Chaos. This could sell me a Cortex, which is worth a lot. You could sell the Cortex or you could run it. Um, so something like this is good in multiple ways. You could have like, maybe you have a bunch of white missions and you're like, I don't really care about running um, white maps anymore. But you could use that to um, spam reset your Zana. So if I have 13 white missions, I could, um, I could just open a bunch of maps, don't even run them and just tick between each time. Um, and I think I had three or four Cortexes here. I had three or four Cortexes here. Um, let's see. So, this is the ultimate juicing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's actually notes for this too. Hold on, one sec. Oh, it's whatever. Anyway, there's there's multiple juicing things here. So this is uh, a only tier 5 tower map. So obviously we talked about a low tier. It's easier to sustain uh, and obviously it's less dangerous. And when we're doing this thing here, Delirium, um, it makes it very, very hard. It actually makes 100% Delirium tier 5. I'd say that's probably like, maybe like similar strength or slightly harder than a normal tier 16, right? Is that fair to say? I think so. Either way, it makes it a lot more dangerous. Uh, we have Do Not Consume Sextant uses here, which is um, a, a Zana thing. And and this this is like super juiced, by the way. 
Um, this is super juiced. Whereas, yeah, I guess it is much harder. But either way, it's a uh, it's just super juiced, and a lot of players aren't going to do this because this is a map you don't just like run this once. You actually use fractured fossils to make more of this. Um, which will what that would do is when you use a fractured fossil on this, it'll keep this one. This is also called fractured, which is bad. They use the same word for two completely different things. But a fractured fossil uh, with a fractured mold, it would basically re-roll the map and give you another tower map exactly like this. So it would keep the does not consume sextant charges. It would keep the 100% delirium. And it would keep slaying enemies together. It has a 13% chance to attract monsters from beyond, which is even more extra monsters. Um, and then everything else would be random. And you basically make yourself a base type like this and then keep using fractured fossils. And fractured fossils are like, well, depending on the league, uh, as low as 50 C is, I think, the lowest I've ever seen them, and up to, like, 300, 400 C. Um, and uh, the, the price changes based on the league and if they've, like, buffed or nerfed things. However, um, this is, like, incredibly worthwhile doing in a group of six people where you can make multiple exalts per map. Uh, even get multiple raw exalts per map, but just a large, large amount. Um, so pretty insane pretty sure the map splitting is going away in 3.14 no it is not you're wrong that is uh, you're thinking about the best theory split is going away the uh they have not talked about fractured split it might go away maybe it should but the fractured split as of what we know right now is not being changed that might change on wednesday with the patch notes uh but either way this is like a example of a like super end game juice if you're wondering what people are doing if you're wondering how to fracture this mod on here, uh, it's a thing in Harvest, which we are going to be covering in Harvest 202, I think. Uh, and it's basically, um, you would roll the tower map. Uh, you wouldn't put any of this stuff on. You would just roll until you get beyond. And then it'll be like, um, uh, you can either roll with uh, a fracture as long as the map has three prefixes, fracture as long as it has three suffixes, or fracture as long as the map has five affixes. And then you just have to be lucky and hit the prefix that you want. Um, let's see. <coughs> right. And yeah, the average cost of this on software trade is normally around 100 to 400 chaos uh, to set it up perfectly. Uh, and then another 120 to 300 chaos to make a copy. Uh, and yeah, you don't run your original map. You keep like using that to fracture. Um, and you can use, for example, say you're playing like something that would be killed by reflect. You can use fossils that block like the reflect mod when crafting it. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of things you can do here. Oops. And the top line here is very, very important. Um, you aren't going to spend a hundred chaos on a map and get a hundred raw chaos back out of the map, right? You're going to get like... It, it's you might not even get 100 chaos back on that map but on average your income is going to skyrocket where um you are going to get things like uh good uniques you are going to get good base types you're going to get a shit ton of divination cards and on average you uh you will make a lot of money and uh if you if you're just juicing one map and you're like i got shafted you, you can get unlucky and they'll demoralize you so you want to have like batches of like 10 to 30 maps and uh, same with mapping that's a good rule of thumb anyway is uh, that you do want to like don't like maybe roll one map at a time and put it in um rolling like 10 20 maps and then doing map trading your hideout like lava it'll it'll make you like get a lot more income now that's not everybody's goal and that is also completely okay uh let's see um also yeah um loot filters are very very important it depends what you're doing and how strict you want it to be but having a strict loot filter so you're not like looking at, at loads of like um loot because especially in the end game when you're doing things really really advanced you are going to be getting just so many items to the point of showing all of them could literally crush your game this is obviously a very very advanced thing but it is worth mentioning um and as we've said like the main point of all this is just as many monsters and as many things you can add to the map as possible because that 
it's still going to have the same surface area. So if you have, you know, 2,000 monsters per map, that's better than 300 because you're going to have to travel the same amount of time anyway. And there are some combinations that work really, really well together, like Beyond might seem like, well, this is just adding extra monsters that are dangerous and are going to kill me. But yeah, that is what we're looking for, as many monsters as possible. Um, so that's why we do care about prophecies like Plague of Rats or Frogs, because it they do add a surprising amount. Um, and there are some other prophecies too that are maybe like less chase or less worth going for. But like the ones that add some strong boxes, etc. could also be really, really good to look out for. Um, and like here we have like some good rules of thumbs of sex and modifiers of things that are worth getting. And again, this is like an end game thing uh, that you want to look for. But anything with pack size, anything with monsters is generally good. Um, this one particularly worth looking out for hunted traders. Uh, Mysterious Harbinger as well. Also, they're very, very rewarding. And then you have um, you have a very, very advanced thing, which is like Nemesis Monsters, drop additional currency, which is like jackpot for currency for uh, trade leagues of core players. Uh, and I have that in a separate video, just showing how Nemesis Monsters work. Here, here are some of the good prophecies. So Plague of Rats with Frogs. Um, any Tempest will add 30% quantity. Val wins. I don't think it adds quantity at all, but it will uh, allow you to get loads of corrupted six things, which you can sell for divine orbs. Um, Deadly twins duplicates all bosses. Twins duplicates all rares, and the cursed choir adds a large pack of sea witches to the map. Right. So here's the good combination. So here we have the nemesis monsters drops X additional currency items. Now. Normally what I do, and again, I have a full separate video on this because it's a very in-depth thing, but if I ever roll a map at any point during the campaign that has both the mod Nemesis and Beyond on one single map, I keep it. I don't roll it. Even if it was something I really need for progression, I will keep it because getting both on the same map, what this means is that I can then have the Nemesis and Beyond and add an additional Beyond from the map device. And when I fully juice this map then, it is literally raining currency to the point where whenever a new player sees it, you could go watch my video on it. You literally think I'm cheating because even on solo cell phone as a solo player, you're dropping so much currency. Uh, so this is a really, really cool thing worth checking out and why it's worth saving those maps. Uh, Beyond or Nemesis isn't always available for Sana as well, which is problematic. Um, areas are inhabited by X additional rogue sextants is a really, really cool thing to like, you can um, do Calandra's craft, you can, which drops like uh, a bunch more like of a rare item. You can do the wealthy exile prophecy. Um, and um, you can also do, there's a, there's a, another combination we haven't listed here, but you can do the areas are inhabited by additional rogue exiles, unique bosses drop corrupted items and rogue exiles drop jewels. Then you get a bunch of corrupted jewels, which is really, really good because a lot of things uh, or, or a thing that a lot of players try to get is a any jewel corrupted with a player is immune to corrupting blood, which is a very, very dangerous mod. Um, so there's a lot of cool combinations here. Uh, this one's another one as well. If you do strong boxes, uh, have 500 or monsters from strong boxes have 500% increased item quantity. That means that all the monsters that are coming out of those tests will drop more stuff. Uh, and here we have strong bosses in the areas are rare and corrupted. And then you fire in a monster's treasure prophecy and you throw ambush on the map. Now you have no monsters in the map at all, but you have 50 strong boxes and they are all corrupted and they are going to drop you. I think the most from just this I've had in one map is like 11 six things in one map or 10. Um, because the corrupted chests have such a big chance to drop corrupted six things. Um, they can sometimes be usable, usually not, especially at the start of a league they are, but either way, that's a lot of divine orbs. It's really, really good. Um, but honestly, at the end of the day, the number one thing that matters for just generating currency and wealth in Path of Exile, your hideout is lava. So if you're standing around, if you're fucking around and watching streamers all day, you aren't making any currency. So being efficient is the number one end all be all for being rich in Path of Exile. This was a more uh, advanced class called Mapping 202. If anyone has any uh, advanced mapping questions, feel free to ask. And this was the last session for today. 
And tomorrow we are going to do, I think it's harvest. What are we doing tomorrow? We're doing Leagues 101. This is a two hour session. I'm dreading doing two hours with nonstop. And it's a very long session, but we're going to cover every past league in Path of Exile. Uh, and all like it's a catch up mechanic basically and then harvest 101 is the two classes tomorrow so um, if you have any questions can you explain resetting Zana's inventory again yes very simply every time I open a map and do a Zana mission she will reset her inventory so if you look now right we have summit and loads of white maps here if I now do the atlas mission throw in any red map and do a red or any, any atlas mission could be the yellow one too now this is reset and there's completely different ones what will be on the test? Tests don't start until next semester. There will be exams and tests next semester. The new Beastcraft add mod to a map. Is it going to be best to sell or apply? Don't know yet. Yes, map recipes were included. New segment about the Maven. Could you talk about how certain endgame boss encounters she could witness to give you additional points for that list of awakening? Could you shortly summarize how to get to these endgame other than conquer? Uh, yes. I can. That's an excellent question that I should have covered more in the original thing. Okay, so we have these advanced endgame fights, right? Like the, the formed, the feared, etc. How do you get them? So say the top one, right? Where you have to do Lair of the Hydra, Mace of the Minotaur, Forge of the Phoenix, and Pit of the Chimera. Well, once you've done all four of them, then what? What if you haven't dropped any? Because here we have the feared, right? We have the formed, which I only have one of. Um, and you can see these have... I think roughly a 20 or 25% chance to drop every time you do one of them. They can drop from anywhere, literally. Like you could be doing tier 16 maps and you can drop the form, but they have a 20, 25% chance to drop from the thing you're searching for. You could get very unlucky. When I was searching for my Breach Lords one, I think I did 11 Breach Lords for my second one before I got the invitation. Can you promise that you'll wear a tie tomorrow? No. I want to be comfortable. How to roll your invitations. So that depends a lot on your character. I generally try to at least roll them blue. They very much are a lot more rewarding if you roll them, especially these ones in the middle. Um, on my strong characters, I was trying to roll 40 to 60 and trying to make sure that they don't fuck my entire shit up. Um, but at least 20. Why not choose red maps as solo? Because most of the people are not going to have a strong enough build that they can do 100% Delirium maps solo. What is the Cortex? The Cortex is an endgame boss fight in Path of Exile from an old league called Synthesis. Um, and um, it's basically just, just a boss fight. It's like a lot of it is random as well. The mods on the fight is random. So we can, uh, we can open a Cortex here. Um, uh, let's see. I can actually go on a character. Actually, I don't really want to open it right now. I'll, I'll do it later. But either way, it's just a, a boss fight with some random modifiers. Every time you kill a boss in a map, you have a chance to get a master mission. How does Beyond interact with Nemesis additional mostly? It's because every time a Beyond spec spawns, every time you spawn Beyond, there will be at least a rare there. So when there's Nemesis and Beyond on the map, every time Beyond spawns, there's a rare with Nemesis there. Can you show us how to make a map copy? I can't because uh, I'm playing Solo Cell Phone and um, I, it's not something you can really do on Solo Cell Phone. It's a trade league only thing. Um, it would actually be pretty cool to to get a video with MP or something for like a little bit more like super juicing. With this league possibly being more great finally, is running Solo game going to be worth with Factor Fossil? Most likely going to be more expensive now. Maybe not. Maybe not worth Solo. I think they've focused way too hard on making group play. Um way too valuable it's insane uh have we published the mapping 202 powerpoint anywhere no they're just for videos but you could look through the video uh but yeah for most people it's uh it's not uh, obviously it's not something you can regularly do in ssf you usually can do it a few times um and uh yeah harder to do i have videos on playing soul cell phone on youtube already we actually have past Wee universities I mean, usually you just do it once and then you never do it again, Urbio. What maps do you leave uncompleted? Right now I didn't do any except for League Start, where it was just anything with a bad layout. Like Necropolis, Cells, unless it, or I mean Cells is very good to do sometimes for Divination cards, but unless I know that I need the map for a Divination card, I will avoid doing maps that I feel are bad layouts.
Which dim cards are worth farming for? Completely depends on the meta and stuff. Changes every league. Does the Elder and Shaper Skyrim's influence Zana map offer as well? Nope. Nothing, nothing influences Zana's map offer. Other than the, uh, this thing. Any tips on tiers of juicing? For example, we should do 40, 60 on, uh, okay. So honestly, I feel like Delirium, I, I generally feel like just using one orb is really good on hardcore because you are, where are my things? Uh, because when you're using one Delirium orb on map, you're getting one free as well in terms of reward. Um, so if you're scared of losing your character and dying, one is really good. One is incredibly strong because then you get the one you're putting on plus a random one, which could be anything. Because when you're putting on two, you don't get two random ones. So it's actually pretty good value for money on hardcore to use one. That's explained in the previous session, Brava. Watch that one. Um, they might change when Headhunter is droppable, but currently Headhunter is item level 40 to drop. What do you mean get a random one? Um, so if I throw this on here, now it's going to be scarabs, but when I go in, the rewards will be scarabs and maybe currency, or scarabs and maybe armor. But yeah, that was main uh, the main like normal questions um, that we're going to cover here. I, I'll stay around a little bit after the session too and chat to you guys. But uh, for those watching on YouTube, thank you guys so much for uh, watching. Uh, best way to supporting is subbing on Twitch or subbing on YouTube helps a lot too. And for those that do want to go the extra mile, we have uh, each each semester is going to have its own design for um, PUE University. So if you are enjoying the sessions and feel like they're bringing any value to your life at all, feel free to support in any way. And uh, yeah, but the most important thing of all, try to die less than I do. <laughs>